I grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I was there for about 18 years before I went away to college. I can't remember not being interested in science. By the age of five, I was borrowing my father's hammers. He was a furniture maker by training, and I beat up his hammers on rocks, and I was five years old. I never was not interested in those things. I was otherwise a normal kid. I played a lot of baseball and football, did a lot of sports, but my friends, they didn't have the interest in science I did. I was the only one, pretty much, who beat up on rocks and collected plants, that kind of thing. As far back as my memory goes, I was always interested in geology. I always enjoyed looking at rocks. I wanted to collect them, take them home with me, look at them more carefully, study them over time. But what really cemented my interest in collecting minerals and rocks was a trip when I was eight years old to the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia. And they had a wonderful display of minerals at that time, and they had a display of fluorescent minerals, which for its time was magnificent. So this was back in 1956. And I just got hooked right then and there on minerals, and I never let that hook get out of me. From that time on, uh, from age eight, I was briefly entertaining other possible professions. I grew up next door to policemen, wanted to be a policeman for a while. I wanted to be a doctor, the usual stuff. But geology always came out first. It keeps me outside. It keeps me fit. It lets me use my mind. It lets me publish what I know. It lets me collect minerals and rocks. I can't beat it. It's the profession for me. As a child, I was very lucky to have the parents I did because, uh, like most parents of their generation, they very much valued education. So they wanted me to be in school for as long as I could possibly stand it so that I would be able to get a better job than they were ever able to have themselves. That was typical of parents back in the 1950s and 1960s. They wanted that for their children. And my parents were wonderful because essentially they didn't care what I did as long as I got the education to do it well and prospered in the process. My mother was, like many, a homemaker and then she went to work for the state of Pennsylvania as an accountant. And my father was, by training, a furniture maker but made his living as a meat cutter and he had a grocery store in Philadelphia. And my family, I am the first and only geologist to this day. I went to Penn State for a BS and a PhD degree, so it's the only, only university I ever knew. At the time I was at Penn State, it had one of the larger departments in geology and geochemistry and geophysics. It was a diverse and very strong faculty. That's one of the reasons I went there. That's one of the reasons I stayed there. It was a very good university, and I got a good quality education while I was there. When I was in school, I had, how many mentors could I name? There's so many. The faculty, again, was very, very good and large. My experience in a university is like a lot of others and just like a lot of life in general, that the people around you, there are key people who send you veering off in different directions and really determine the course of your life. So part of it is the institution you're in, but a greater part of it is the people you come in contact with, the ones you connect with. They influence what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. When I was at the U.S. Geological Survey, what I mostly studied was how rocks break. And that may sound simple, but if you look at almost any rock that you see in road cuts, wherever you are, you'll see the rocks are cut by fractures, and those fractures may look random to you, but they're not. They're very, very systematic, over thousands of square miles. That's what I studied, and why? Why would anybody care? Because if you want to drill a water well or an oil well, what brings the water or oil to the well bore so you can bring it out to the surface it's fractures. That's where the fluids flow in fractures. And if you know what the fracture network is like, you can drill fewer oil wells and get greater production with less environmental damage. That's the reason for doing this kind of work. Yeah, that knowledge of what subsurface fracture networks are like is particularly valuable these days because we have directional drilling technology. It used to be that the only practical way of drilling a borehole was just straight down vertically. That's all we could do. Now we can drill boreholes at any angle we want and we can even curve them into any direction we want. So if you know where the fractures are and what directions they run, you can drill right across them and bring a lot of oil to your well bore. Again, with one well where previously you might have needed three or four for the same level of production. In the USGS, most of my work took place in Colorado and Utah, but I also worked briefly in Arizona, Minnesota, and even in Canada. We do do projects in various different parts of the nation and sometimes even overseas. 
During my career, I made a lot of small incremental discoveries that advanced our knowledge in geology. Some of the things I worked on, the types of deposits I worked on, nobody knew how they formed. And we studied and studied and studied them and figured out how they formed. So it's exciting after 100 years of mining to say, now we know why this stuff is here. That is exciting to me, to be able to understand the genesis of something. If any of you are planning a career, or hoping for a career in the sciences today, there are several things you can do. The main one is read. Read and learn. Read, read, read. Get out in the world, experience it, learn about it. If you do want to become a scientist, I'm sorry, you're going to be stuck with a lot of math, physics, and chemistry. Those are just basics, so I hope you like or can learn to like those subjects. To me, they're utterly fascinating. Take as much math, chemistry, and physics as you can. Take a lot of biology, too, because one thing I've learned, even in geology, you think geology and biology are two different things? No, they're not. A lot of minerals form through biological means. We're learning more and more and more about that, so biology is becoming more important in geology, something I never would have thought 30 years ago. Also, learn languages. Probably you'll be working overseas sometime. Uh, the more languages you know, the more original sources of literature you can go to yourself and learn from primary rather than secondary sources. Read. Learn languages. They're fascinating in themselves and they take you to places you never would have believed. Now, a lot of people think of scientists, particularly geologists, we study in far-flung parts of the world. We work uh, alone a lot of the time, and I did. I worked alone for a lot of my career. So I'm out in the middle of the field somewhere, walking around. There may not be a road for miles around. That's my normal day. But geology, pretty much all of science, it is a pretty social experience because you have to let people know what you've learned. It doesn't matter if you've learned anything until you impart that knowledge to somebody else. So you have to learn how to speak in seminars and meetings of your peers, and you have to learn how to write. You better be a good writer because the only product you will ever produce, typically as a scientist, published works. Yeah, in a very real sense, scientists are storytellers, but hopefully we never deviate very far from factual knowledge while telling our story. One of the things I tell people about being a scientist, uh, it's endlessly fascinating to people who want to know how the earth works. Why are things here? How do they happen? How do they work today? What's going on? I want to understand this earth and I certainly never will in my lifetime. I certainly couldn't understand this earth in 20 lifetimes. That's why I'm a scientist because it's a never-ending quest for knowledge and I love that. I don't ever want to take on anything that I could fully comprehend and say, okay, now what? I'll never be able to say that as a scientist. Another thing about being a geologist is you never stop being one. When Wherever you are, you can do geology. It doesn't matter where you put me on the face of this earth. If there's rock or soil under my feet, I can do geology. If I'm out in the middle of the ocean, I can think about the geology that's beneath me and how that ocean basin forms. So my mind is going all the time. I'm never very far away from my profession because I love it that much and I can do it anywhere. You know, I think it's a lot of fun being a scientist. Again, for all the reasons I mentioned, I'm outside, I'm studying what I love, I have the opportunity, the sheer joy of imparting my knowledge to other people. I can publish what I know, and then everybody else can know it too. I like that part of it. I like that a lot. So it's endless fun to me. I really enjoy doing what I do, gaining knowledge. I just have a good time learning new stuff every day, and that's my goal, learn something every day.